Hey, welcome to my second tutorial in my series of Stickman animation tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to place it, replace this boring old block with a rolling spike ball. So uh, you'll get introduced to movie clips and motion tweening, or I guess classic tweening. Uh, so first thing to do is to remove this block. So to do that, just click on it and hit delete. And then to fill in this uh, white area, just fill it in with this, with the uh, rectangle tool and make sure you have outline selected on to nothing and then just use the eyedropper tool to click there and then just draw a rectangle to get rid of that white area. So if you preview it now, control enter or command enter on a Mac, you'll have a stick man tripping over nothing. So anyways, that looks pretty good for that. And the next step is to make your spike ball. So that's where movie clips come in. You'll see how they work kind of as we go along here. So to create a movie clip, hit insert, new symbol, and make sure it's set to movie clip. And we're going to name this uh, spike ball one. And hit OK. So now this is our movie clip. If we zoom out here, you can see this is what's called the stage. And yeah, so anyways, that's our movie clip. What we're going to do now is create the spike ball. So we're going to select the oval tool and just create a circle. It should snap to when you have a circle. If it doesn't, just check to make sure this magnet uh, icon is depressed. And then it should snap to a circle. Now the next step, actually I'm just going to change it to a slightly darker color. And just click on it and select a different color. And that looks pretty good. The next step is to center it to the center of the stage. This is the very center of the stage. We're going to center this this uh, this gray circle to the center uh, to that thing. Click on it. Go up to the align panel. If it's not there, you can just make sure it's checked under the window menu and uh, make sure the cent the two stage icons depressed. And then just under the align area, click the center button. Under distribute, click the center button again, or under the distribute area and then it'll be perfectly centered to the center of your stage. Now what you want to do is create your spikes. So for that we're just going to create a new layer here and then take our pen tool. Doesn't matter what the outline color is, we're going to end up deleting it anyways. Just zoom in here once and then just click. It'll actually snap to the edge of your circle and just draw your spikes. Click, click, click. Make some spikes that are a little shorter than other ones, some that are longer. Not going to worry about making mine too perfect. Just want to make a crazy looking spike ball. That looks pretty good. If you're unhappy with any of your lines, you don't need to completely redo it. You can just click on the uh, selection tool and you can just move them around like that. So, I'm happy with that. You can just fill it with the color using the paint bucket tool. I'm just going to fill it with the, uh, you can fill it with the color of your choice. I'm just going to fill mine with the blue color. Now to get rid of, rid of the outline, just uh, hover over the outline and you should see kind of an arc underneath your cursor. Double click and hit delete or backspace on your keyboard and it'll just get rid of that outline. So now uh, that's good for that. We're going to add a reflection and make animate it kind of spinning around. So we could do it kind of all in this layer but or all in this movie clip, but it's easier if we do it in a separate movie clip. So I'll show you how we'll do that in a second. Create another movie clip. Name this one Spike Ball 2 or Spin to be a little more creative and hit OK. So now we have our second movie clip. This is the center of this movie clip. I'm just going to drag our Spike Ball out into here. And this is where all of your movie clips and graphics and stuff are and buttons are saved to. Uh, we're just dealing with movie clips right now. So this is our Spike Ball movie clip edit a movie clip you've already made, just double click on the, uh, the, the icon of the movie clip you want to edit, and we're editing the spike ball movie clip. And by the way, if you want to get back to your main scene, here you can see this is scene 1, which is your main scene, and we're editing spike ball 1. So just click there, and you'll see your main scene. So we want to edit spike ball spin, so just double click there, and we have our blank movie clip. So the first thing, the first thing we want to do is drag out spike ball 1 onto the stage here and you can see this looks pretty good. Now when rotating it around, the one thing you might want to change, right, you'll find, 
So when you rotate it, you s keep a close eye on this gray uh, circle. Actually, if I zoom in here, this is pretty good, but in some of them, say back in spike ball, or a spike ball one, say I added a random circle over here, went back to here. Now when I'm spinning it around, actually I'll just delete this and re-add it. So now when I'm spinning this around, you'll see it'll just spin around like that. The spike ball will be moving all over the place. If you want it to rotate around your gray circle, you see this is the center point your spike ball rotates around. And this is the center of the circle, because remember we centered the circle to the center of the, the, uh, the spike ball one stage. So this is basically will act as the center of our circle. Just drag this point, the kind of the rotation point to there, it should snap to the center. It should snap to that thing, just release. And now when you rotate it, it'll rotate around the circle. So anyways, I'm gonna get rid of that uh, this little thing up here. Just go back into the spike ball one graphic, double click and delete. So now back in spike ball spin. Could have probably chosen better names. But anyways, now you can see we have a nice rotation. So to animate it rotating, we're going to use what's called a tween. T to do that, actually first we're going to add a reflection, then we'll, we'll, uh, then we'll animate it spinning. So to add a reflection, we'll just create a new layer. Use our pen tool. And it doesn't matter what the outline is, we're going to be deleting it anyways. Just zoom in here. And just create a moon shape on the side of your ball here. That looks pretty good. Fill it with a very light gray color, like that, and double click, and delete your outline. So, that looks pretty good. The reflection's a little bit kind of uh, square looking, but I'm not going to be that picky. It's just a stick man animation. So now to animate the spike ball spinning around, Select layer one. Actually, don't select anything. Just hit F F five five times. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Sorry. What that does is just extends these frames out five frames. And now we're going to right click and add what's called a classic tween. In older versions of Flash, it'll be called something different, but uh, that's what we're going to add. Motion tweens are new to to uh, Flash CS four, so we're just going to add a classic tween because some of you might be using Flash. CS3 or older versions of Flash. So anyways, click uh, Classic tween, tween, or the equivalent of using an older version of Flash, and then go to the very last frame and hit F6. That'll create a keyframe. Now what a tween does is it's a very easy way of making stuff move around. We're just going to rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And now when we look here, you'll see it'll rotate. As you can see, it's hard to tell which way it's rotating because this is only 12 frames per second, or 15 frames per second, sorry. Right? So, if we want to see it really spin, we'll just go back to spike ball 1, create a new layer on the very top, and we're just going to add a random rectangle with no outline, and we'll just make it black, and, man, it's hard to see your cursor in here. We'll just make it like that. And now if we go back to spike ball spin, you'll see the changes, changes we made here will automatically be reflected to any, uh, any scenes that have that spike ball one graphic in it, or a movie clip in it. So now as we go forwards, you can truly see it is rotating. So anyways, we'll go to the very end here, hit F5, five more times, one, two, three, four, five, then F6, rotate it 90 degrees more, like that, and one, two, three, four, five. Whoop, you see, that's what happens if you have a certain layer selected. It'll just extend the frames out of that layer, so we'll just undo that. Control Z or Command Z on a Mac. If you if you just click off the layers and then hit F5, it'll extend both at once. Extend it five more frames and F6. And then you want to rotate it 90 more degrees counterclockwise. And then click off. One, two, three, four, five, F6. And 90 degrees. And that's pretty good. So, if we look at that, that's pretty good. The reflection stays in one spot, which is what we want. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So, the only problem here is that you see the first frame and the last frame. First frame and the last frame are the exact same, which uh, which will create a bit of a pause, because this is just going to be a loop. That's how, uh, that's how movie clips work. 
is when, when we drag this movie clip into our main scene like this, we'll just create a new layer. So you can see here. And we'll just drag it in, the spike ball spin. You'll see if we preview this, control enter, it just loops around and around. But you see at the top there, there's a bit of a pause, right? Which we don't really want that. So to fix that, just double click on spike ball spin to edit it. We're just going to delete, the, delete this last frame. So in order to do that, we'll just create a keyframe back here, F6, and select those two, two there, and hold in shift, click the one above it. Now to delete a keyframe, or a series of frames, hold in shift and hit F5, and you'll delete the last frame. So now, the last frame and the first frame will be kind of in line to work with each other. Now we don't have to, if we go back to scene one, those changes we made have automatically been reflected onto this movie clip, because if we preview this, you'll see now, we'll have a nice, smooth rotation motion. So, that's uh, basically how we make our spike ball. Now, to animate it moving across, that's pretty easy. We'll just go to when the stick man gets hit with it. I'm going to drag my spike ball below stick man, stick man layer, so that the his blood will kind of go over top of the spike ball. I'm just going to position that below him. It's a little bit too big. Just use the transform tool to scale it down. Holding in shift to keep it a uniform size. Oop. What am I doing here? Okay, that's it. I'll just, yeah, I'll say that size will work. And just position it right there. Just use the arrow keys to move it up and down. If you hold in shift and use the arrow keys, it'll move it around quite a bit more. We'll be using that in a second. So that looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the very first frame here and move our spike ball, holding in shift and use the arrow key to just nudge it over there, all the way off the scene. So now if we play this back, there won't be a spike ball because it's over there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to where the stick man gets hit. We're going to use that as a reference. This, the spike ball should be about halfway across the screen here. So we want to kind of drag the spike ball all the way across using a tween, a classic tween. So if the spike ball's in the middle of the scene right here, well, if it's uh, kind of if it's on the right-hand side of the scene, or off of the right-hand side, right there in the middle, right here, it should be off the left-hand side, about right there. So just right-click here and click on Create Classic Tween, make a keyframe F6, and hold on Shift and nudge it all the way over, and right off the other side of the scene there. Okay. Now let's see if this looks good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Say for instance, just drag it back there. Say that it looks kind of a little bit off like that. It means the spike ball is moving a little bit too fast. To slow it down, we just want to extend the period it takes for it to make its way across the scene. So you can just click on this keyframe here and just drag it. And then it'll look a little better. There you go, that looks perfect. And as you can see, as we drag, as we uh, kind of advance forward here in the animation, the spike ball is not actually showing its animation. It'll only show its animation if you do a preview. Let's do that right now. Control Enter. And you can see it's spinning around and it trips our stick man. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe it could be a little bit smaller, but I'm not going to worry about that. The one thing we could do, I'll just show you here. Because, I mean, what's he hitting here that makes this little bit of blood come out? So, to get rid of that, simply click on the stick man layer, and then go to the very first frame you see it, right there, and just click on his blood, or the stick man blood, blood, and hit delete or backspace, and then you can just hit F17 to go forwards, forward one frame, and just do the same thing throughout your whole animation, or just these few frames that contain the green blood coming off of the imaginary edge of the block that we don't have anymore. Anyways, that looks pretty good. So, now he only has the blood when he hits it. Probably get rid of that too. Anyways, I'm not going to worry about that. So, control enter, and I'd say that looks pretty good. So anyways, you have to play around with that, try and get it to look as good as you can. And I'm going to be making another tutorial, or another couple showing you how to just uh, kind of add an effect at the end to make it look like kinda, he kind of end up, ends up decomposing. It's not going to be gruesome or anything, don't worry. But it'll just be a neat effect. 
and we'll use the shape tween and then I'm going to show you kind of the best way kind of to add text or just the way I would add text if I were you and uh, yeah then maybe I'll make another t tutorial showing you how to add some sound effects so anyways thanks for watching and sorry if that was a little bit too long uh, it's just that it's hard to cover everything I covered in a shorter video so anyways yeah